we walk through replicas of military daggers today on the V-Blog at Bud K. Hi, I'm Nathan Lawson, and Merry Christmas and thanks for watching. The Military Daggers are on the docket today, and we'll walk through some of the current top bestsellers. Now, today's show is going to be a bit different from previous episodes. We're giving our demo team a week off by going through and discussing some display pieces. Now, we have three different types of daggers that we're going to look over today. We've got a couple of World War I trench knives, some commemorative-style daggers, and two bayonets. Now, let's go ahead and get on to those product reviews. Now, first up, we have the Replica War One 1918 Trench Knife, retailing for $30, but on sale at Budcake for $19.99. Now, this 1918 World War I Replica Trench Knife is an exact copy of the one issued to troops during the First World War. Now, since trench warfare was such gruesome, close quarter combat, the Trench Knife allowed soldiers to not only stab, but also bludgeon enemies with the knuckle guard handle. Now the 6 and 3 8 inch AUS 6 stainless steel blade is double edged. Now the sheath is sold separately, but we also do have those in stock for only $3.99 each. Check out Bud K for more information on it. Now Gunny81 from Michigan says, being the owner of an actual 1918 trench knife, and now the owner of the replica, I'm able to compare them side by side. And this knife is amazingly close. Obviously it's antiqued for the old worn look. This is a true piece of history replicated, and I can only imagine the horror that was felt by the combatant in hand-to-hand -hand with this truly terrifying weapon that can destroy at every angle. Alright, next up we have the Tomahawk World War I Black Trench Knife, retailing for $27, but also a Bud K for $19.99. For up-close combat, the Allies carry trench knives like this one. For this replica, the stainless steel blade is enclosed in a rock-solid zinc aluminum knuckle guard handle for in-your-face enemies. Now this one actually includes the nylon sheath and is 14 inches overall. The Goliath 260 from Virginia says, this trench knife is pretty massive. The blade is only meant for stabbing and you can stab with anything blunt if you have enough force. Now luckily this is sharp and pointy as ever and sturdy. It's a great addition with the knuckle guard and hammer spike at the bottom. It's a 100% buy. Okay, we're gonna take a moment and look at the history on the trench knife. Now a trench knife is a combat knife designed to kill or greatly incapacitate an enemy soldier at close quarters, as might be encountered in a trench line or other confined area. It was developed in response to a need for a close combat weapon for soldiers conducting assaults and raids on enemy trench lines during the First World War. Now an example of a war, authentic World War I trench knife is the Mark I trench knife as seen on the screen now. Now with the outbreak of the Second World War, the trench knife by this time is usually referred to as the combat knife. It proved so useful that armies continue to develop and issue new design. Now Allied armies generally restricted issue of trench knives to elite infantry units and infantry not otherwise equipped with the bayonet. Now for, those two, for these two replicas, you can have the choice of what type of trench knife you would like to display. And for these prices, you can actually easily pick up both without breaking the bank. Now next up we have the commemorative replica, the Soa V42 Marine Dagger Banks Edition with sheath retailing for $67 but on sale at Bud K for only $34.99. Colonel Aaron Bank was an officer of the United States Army and the founder of the U.S. Army Special Forces, commonly called the Green Beret. Colonel Bank is commonly known throughout the Army Forces as the father of the Green Berets. Now the V42 Stiletto was used extensively in many Special Force branches as a primary fighting knife. This historically accurate V42 stiletto replica features a stacked leather handle like the original. Each dagger offers a razor sharp double edged stiletto blade that pierces through even the toughest material with ease. Now thumb notches are cast into the handle above the guard to keep the knife from slipping when wet or wearing gloves. Now, each piece is laser serialized with an etch from the Soa shield. It also includes an exact replica of the extended sheath which hung below the soldier's winter park. Alright, next we have the replica Royal British Commando Knife retailing for $10, but it's on sale at Bud K for only $6.99, or you can get three for only $6 each. This classic commando knife features a six and three-quarter inch stainless steel blade. 
a solid metal ribbed handle with finger guard for a secure grip. Now the entire knife is coated with a non-glare black finish and it also includes the sheath. It's 11 and a quarter inches overall. Now Mr. Hipbone <laughs> from Texas says, despite what the other reviewers say, I ordered this knife with two other pieces. Now for $6, this is an awesome piece. The knife is sturdy, the blade is sharp and pointy, and there is no damage anywhere to be seen. The sheath is interesting, made from a hard leather, and it fits the blade perfectly. I thought it was based on the other reviews, I was going to be a tad disappointed. But the truth is, it's an absolute steal for the price. I would recommend this as a third item to any group of knives, anyone seeking military items. Thanks, Bud K. Alright, I want to take a moment and look at the background of these commemorative replicas. Now the history on the British Commando and the B-42 are actually a similar road. Before World War II, the British Commando was known as the Fairbrand Sykes Fighting Knife, or the FS. Now it's seen on the screen now. The FS is a double-edged fighting knife resembling a dagger with a foil grip developed by William Eric Fairbrand and Eric Anthony Sykes in Shanghai and is based on concepts which the two men initiated before World War II while serving on the Shanghai Municipal Police in China. And the FS fighting knife was made famous during World War II when it was issued to the British commandos, including the SAS. Now with its accurately tapered, sharply pointed blade, the FS fighting knife is frequently described as a stiletto, a weapon optimized for thrusting, although the FS knife is capable of being used to inflict the slash cuts upon an opponent when its cutting edges are sharpened according to specification. Now the Wilkes & Sword Company made the knife with minor pommel and grip design variations. Now also for the V42 Stiletto was uh, a fighting knife issued during World War II and it was based on the FS Commando knife. Alright next we have the Military Green Fixed Bayonet with sheath retailing for $60 but it's on sale at Butt for only $34.99. This exclusive bayonet features a 10 inch black coated blade constructed from solid, durable AUS 6 stainless steel. Now, the heavy duty ABS handle is textured for a secure grip. It includes an OD hard ABS sheath with a metal top and a belt hanger. Now, Jacob15 from Oregon says, I just got this bayonet today and it is amazing. It comes pretty sharp. It's the first bayonet I've ever gotten. I give it five stars. All right, next with the bayonets, we have the M16 Tactical Bayonet Knife, retailing for $22, but it's on sale at Bud K for $16.99. Now, this is an exact replica of the M16 bayonet issued by the military during the Vietnam War. This fully functional piece is equipped with a 9-inch stainless steel blade with a heavy, heavy blood group. The black checkered handle is a heavy-duty construction and provides a superb grip. Solid stainless steel guard and butt. And it also includes a leather sheet. It's 14 and an 8 inches overall. Now, Salty from Texas says this about the bayonet. I bought two of these, and they are great. And I've got to have more, as my friends have decided they needed them more than me. It's a much higher quality than I was expecting for 10 bucks. Very impressed. Now, obviously, he got it on sale, which we sometimes happen so often. Uh, and you might be able to check it so often. But currently on our website, it is for $16.99. All right, and now, of course, we're going to take a look at the bayonets together. Now, prior to World War I, bayonet doctrine was largely centered around the concept of reach, that is, a soldier's theoretical ability by use of an extremely large rifle and fixed bayonet to bayonet an enemy, in, in, enemy soldier without having to approach within reach of the opponent's blade. Now, a combined length of the rifle and the bayonet longer than that of the enemy's infantryman's rifle and attached bayonet, like the infantryman's pike of bygone days, was thought to impart a definite tactical advantage on the battlefield, and military authorities engaged in endless discussions over the supposedly advantages of a longer rifle slash bayonet combinations. Now, the experience of World War I saw a complete reversal in opinion on the relative value of long rifles and bayonets in typical combat infantry operations. Now, whether in the close confines of trench warfare, nighttime raiding and patrolling, or attacks across open ground, soldiers of both sides, then they soon recognized that the inherent limitations of a long and ungainly rifle and bayonet were used when used as a close quarters battle weapon. And once Allied soldiers had been trained to expect the throw point or extended thrust and lunge attacks, the method lost most of the tactical value on the World War I battlefield. 
It required a strong arm and a wrist, was very slow to recover if the initial thrust missed its mark, and was easily parried by a soldier who was trained to expect it, thus exposing the German soldier to a return thrust which he could not easily block or parry. Now, instead of longer bayonets, the infantry forces on both sides began experimenting with other weapons as auxiliary close arms, including the trench knife we saw with earlier, the pistol, hand grenade, and the entrenching tool. And of course, we do all know that the bayonet is still in use today, as you can see in this picture now. Alright folks, I hope that you've enjoyed this week's vlog of Bud K. As always, you can send us your video responses on your preferences to military daggers. Of course, this holiday weekend, we want to show you something a little bit differently, go into some history with some pieces. So you can email us your comments, suggestions, and requests at vblog at budk.com. That's vblog at budk.com. Tell us what you think about the history methods that we're using on this week's episode. Check out budk.com slash videos for all videos produced here at BudK. And of course, the pick and choose is running strong. Make sure you choose your favorite item from the YouTube playlist that we have. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there is a link on the screen now. Check it out. You never know. You might be the winner. Now, from all of us here at Bud K, I'm Nathan Lawson. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Thanks, and I will see you next time.